the colorful holiday costumes, rural Polish villagers are action of the long history and tradition of Poland. So are simple old-fashioned farm implements, which are still used to cultivate much of the land. And slow methods of transportation, which are still used in much of rural Poland. Stately palaces, which once housed the nobility, are another Polish tradition that were established in the Middle Ages. Although history and tradition are important in Poland, this is a country slowly becoming part of the modern world. Modern public buildings, transition, new and new factories producing a variety of manufactured goods are also important in today's Poland. But with all its recent emphasis on heavy industry and modern trends, the key to understanding Poland is knowing that this is a country where agriculture is most important to the people. Understanding the geography of Poland will help us discover why farming is important. Broad, flat plains, as a physical map of Poland shows, occupy nearly two-thirds of the country. In addition to these flat plains, there is a region of hills and a fringe of mountains. Although the mountains and hills are useful to the Polish people, this flat region of plains has been the traditional source of Poland's wealth. Here the land is for land that has been valued highly for centuries. Early in Poland's history, when the country was a vast kingdom, large areas of rich productive land were sectioned off and ruled by members of the nobility who lived in state palaces. Palaces and mansions were maintained by the rental paid by peasants who lived simply and who worked the land belonging to the nobles. The richness of the land and the bumper crops it produced did not go unnoticed. Throughout history, several nations have been envious of the productive Polish soil, and the country has often been a battleground. For example, in the last half of the 18th century, Prussia and Russia joined Austria in attacking the rich, almost defenseless country. Three times Poland was overrun and the land divided between the victors. But the Polish people, who deeply loved their country, continued to survive. Following World War I, in which many Polish soldiers fought and died, Poland was re-established as an independent nation through the efforts of the United States. Once again, however, at the outbreak of World War II, Poland was trapped in a vice between Germany and Russia. Both these countries again overran the practically defenseless land. The destruction that took this great war was tremendous. At the end of the war, Polish people, as they had after past wars, set about clearing away the rubble and began the gigantic task of rebuilding their cities. Because of their love for tradition, many of the new buildings constructed by the Poles are almost exact duplicates of historic buildings which stood centuries ago. For example, this in the capital city of Warsaw was copied from paintings made by the Italian artist Canaletto, who visited Poland in the 18th century. Rebuilding the cities has been done not only in the tradition of history, but in the modern style as well. Although some of the modern Polish buildings might look old-fashioned in modern American cities. A change in building styles was only one of the changes that took place in post-war Poland. For peace again brought changes to the map of Poland. Poland gained a large area of productive farmland from Germany, but gave up some of its eastern territory to the Soviet Union. In addition, Soviet troops occupied East Germany and Poland and were instrumental in bringing communist governments into power in both countries. A communist government established the People's Republic of Poland, though it was contrary to the country's historic traditions. To the other communist nations, Poland is important because its people produce much needed goods and foodstuffs. 
As we take a closer look at communist-governed Poland, try to keep in mind how the things this country is doing affect world politics and trade. Let's begin with the breadbasket region, the wide, flat, central plains area of Poland. This area contains over 31 million acres of land under cultivation, more than the entire total area of East Germany, one of Poland's neighbors. Not long after the Second World War, the government tried to control farm production by establishing large collective farms. On collective farms, many families work together, but the machinery as well as the land and houses belong to the government. Most Polish farmers did not care for this system of collective farms, and today most homes and farms are still owned by individual families. One reason for this can be seen in the small villages which dot the Polish countryside. The Poles have always been a devoutly religious people, and their loyalty to the Catholic Church, which opposes communism, has helped maintain some freedom. After early services, the families return to their farms for breakfast. This farm belongs to the Kamakowski family. The morning meal consists of a variety of favorite Polish foods. There's the familiar Polish rye bread, cut in thick, generous slices. Farm sausage, eggs and butter, and fresh milk. After breakfast, work begins. All will stay on the farm except Maria, who goes to the village school. Father Kamakowski and his oldest son Stanisław set out for the fields, and Maria leaves for school, while Mother and Tadeusz go off to feed the chickens. Most farm families raise hogs and cows, as well as poultry. Much livestock was killed in the war, but the raising of animals is once again increasing in Poland. Crop production, too, is increasing after the unsuccessful experiment in collectivized farming. Polish farmers, like the Kamakowskis, produce bumper crops of the very important wheat and other grains, such as oats and rye. These grains grow well in the fertile soil and favorable climate of Poland. This is a climate that is generally pleasantly cool in summer with abundant amounts of rainfall. Also contributing to increased crop production is the widespread use by Polish farmers of chemical fertilizers. These fertilizers are produced in Poland itself, in the south, the industrial area of the country. In this area of Poland, we'll find little farming for this is an area of mining activity. The land here is rich in a variety of natural resources. New mines are being opened, and quantities of ores are being mined today. Ores such as zinc, magnesium, barium, and others used in the production of chemicals. In addition, there are mines producing ores for heavy industry, lead and copper, some iron ore is also mined. Iron is essential to the production of steel. Steel production also depends upon a steady supply of coal. Poland is the world's seventh largest producer of hard coal, and though much of the coal is used in Polish industries, large amounts are exported. This coal is from a mine located in the busy district of Upper Silesia, where most of Poland's coal mining activity is concentrated. In and around Upper Silesia, this large mining area, are many industrial cities. The people who live in these cities are mainly factory workers. All large factories, like the mines of Poland, are owned and operated by the government. In these factories, Poles produce a number of different goods. Steel, of course, to be used in Polish industries, such as the making of automobiles, heavy industrial equipment, 
farm machinery, television receivers, and other electrical equipment, precision instruments for use in engineering projects, and shipbuilding as Poland's merchant fleet continues to grow. There are light industries throughout Poland, too. Some factories manufacture chemicals for farms and industry. Others manufacture drugs. Textiles and cloth making are more of the important light industries in Poland. Industries that are found not only in the south, but the more centrally located cities of Poland as well. But many of the goods manufactured in Poland are not used in the country. Many of Poland's goods find their ways to other countries. Manufactured mineral and agricultural products are sent by rail, by truck, or by barge to the busy port cities. This barge is on one of the largest rivers in Poland, the Oder, or in Polish, the Odra. During the spring, summer, and early autumn months, the Oder and other rivers become important highways of trade, transporting materials to Poland's Baltic seaports, such as Szczecin, Gdańsk, and Gdynia. In Gdynia, goods brought by barges and railroad cars are loaded on to waiting ships for export. Polish goods shipped by water to such areas as Africa and ports of Asia and South America are becoming increasingly important in the world market. Most Polish exports, however, are sent by rail to communist lands. Poland is very important in the bloc of communist countries, for it is a land of many resources. Its hard-working people have rebuilt their country from near ruins. Once again, as has been the tradition of centuries, the farmers of the central flat plains region of Poland are producing a variety of fine crops and livestock to feed the people of Poland and other lands as well. From the industrial south, again come large amounts of mineral resources. Coal to power factories and mineral ores to be used as raw materials in the production of many goods. The very same reasons the increasing productivity of the country and its wealth of resources make Poland important not only to the communist bloc of nations, but to other nations of the world as well.